Good morning, everyone. Hello. Welcome to Coffee and a Card. I go live every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. Pacific, Pacific time. And uh, my name is Tiffany Almeida. I'm with Pretty in Paper Crafts. And I just love to get on every Sunday and demonstrate three fun new projects that I've designed for you. Um, it's a time for us to chat and to laugh and to craft together. And I absolutely love it. So good morning, hello, it looks like some people are getting on. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and go into um, prizes and giveaways. Um, I do a door prize drawing every Sunday. If you share my video, you're entered to win a door prize. And if you complete my raffle copter online on my blog, you'll also get another chance to win a fun prize. So last week I posted that on my blog you could win the um, sequin embellishments, the um, iridescent sequins, this is fun for a shaker card. And raffle copter picked a winner, so congratulations Sharon Kramer. Sharon, you're the winner, woohoo! So I will ship you your sequins tomorrow, so congratulations. Um, and then those of you that shared, I have you entered into my drawing. And thank you, Amy Todd, for the idea of using my cute little trash bins. These are bins that I'm giving away as early bird specials for people who register for my spring fling, which is my crafter's retreat. It's an all day retreat. I have it here locally in Pasco, but I also have a to-go option, which is super fun. So anyone that registers for my event, um, the first 16 people will get one of these. I only have 10 left, and I think I just saw another one come through, so that leaves nine, nine of these cuties left. So Amy had a cute idea of putting all the tickets inside the trash bin, so that's what I did. And I'm giving away that um, part of my story stamp set. This was um, last week's drawing prize, so I will go ahead and draw a winner for that right now. Yes, Patty, thank you so much. Patty just signed up for the spring fling, so she's number seven. So I have nine more of these to go. All right, thank you to everyone that's sharing. You'll be entered in to win my drawing. All right. Amanda Flahaven, yay, Amanda, congratulations. Amanda, you've been watching my um, Facebook Lives and sharing my videos every week uh, for as long as I've been doing this. So thank you so much for watching and sharing and here is your prize. I will ship this right to you. Woohoo, you guys are so amazing. I appreciate every single one of you so much. Um, so for this week's um, prizes, if you do my raffle copter, I'm giving away one of my favorite spools of ribbon, you guys. I've probably given it away before because I absolutely love it. This is the polka dot tulle ribbon. It's whisper white and it's just gorgeous. And we're gonna use it on a bag that I'm gonna show you how to make today. And I am giving away a spool of it because it's my favorite, I love it. Um, and then if you share my video, sorry my bangs are bothering me today. If you share my video, um, you'll be entered in to win one of my class tutorials. So I'll give you a choice between my nine lives um, class tutorial or my classic garage class tutorial. You can have a choice, so the winner gets to choose. Um, so very exciting, I do a full PDF tutorial with pictures and everything. Um, so I would like to give that away to someone for sharing today. That would be absolutely amazing. Thank you guys so much. We had, I had 38 shares last week, that's huge. You guys rock, thank you so much. And don't forget about the little trash cans. They're so cute. I can't. I should have kept one for myself. I should have said 15, but I didn't. I gave them all away. Bad, bad planning on my part. All right. Um, okay, so let's go ahead. I'll talk to my bigs. I'll talk to you guys about my new class, Fable Haven. Fable, I keep saying Fable Haven. Fable Friends. <laughs> have you guys seen that stamp set, Fable Friends? It's absolutely adorable. I know it's Lisa Brigger's absolute most favorite set. <laughs> when we saw this at Onstage in November, we knew that it was for her. <laughs> so this is such a fun and cute and adorable set. And I have the most amazing class. I, 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 I spent, I was up way too late last night um, designing. And so I can't wait to show you guys. Okay, so you guys can see I have a rewards code. If you place an order with me, you get my make and takes. 
Uh, it's a $30 order, you get my make and takes, and then if you bump it up to $50, you get a free celebration item and my fun little free gift of the month, which is the candle embellishments this month. Super, super fun. So I love um, giving away prizes um, and little thank you gifts because um, I appreciate your guys' orders. It, it allows me to continue doing what I love and crafting and creating and sharing. So thank you guys so much. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and show you this fun little class. So here is my Fable Friends class. It comes with a stack of the um, Gingham Gala Designer Series paper, and it also comes with a spool of the Whisper White ribbon, which I ran out of last night, so I can't show you, but it's a big old spool of this beautiful 1 8 inch ribbon. These, it has six projects. Um, cute little box. They're all like little treat holders. Absolutely adorable. And then one Easter card, which I'm just in love with. Um, so I have all these fun different ways to package little Easter treats. Um, little flip top with a little Hershey. So they're very common um, Easter treats. This one has a Cadbury egg in it. Isn't that adorable? So cute. And then of course you need a little Easter basket for all your little treats. So these are six projects that come in my Fable Haven class. Fable, oh my gosh. Fable Friends class. Um, and the class kit is $30. Um, it comes with a PDF and the designer series paper and the spool of ribbon. You can add the stamp set for $50 total for the class. It is a discount for the stamp set. The stamp set is $22 on its own. Um, so you'll be saving quite a bit of money just adding it to your kit. So very fun class. I'm so excited. You guys have until March 22nd, which is next Friday, to sign up for that class. And there is a PDF option. It's $15. Or if you're on my Pretty Little Stampers team, you get it the entire kit for $15. I'll cut and prep everything for you. Um, it won't come with any of the product. You will uh, want to get that with your team, with your demonstrator discount. All right, so let's go ahead and show you guys what the projects are today. Um, I am playing with the Painted Seasons um, bundle, which is, the bundle is actually the stamp set and the designer series paper. As you can see, I'm like down to scraps with my designer series paper. I absolutely love this DSP. It is gorgeous. I've shown you guys before, oh, hit the camera, about how much I love it. Um, the colors are bright, they're beautiful. Um, floral and just amazing for the projects that I'm going to be using. So the bundle is the stamp set and the designer series paper that is free with a hundred dollar purchase during celebration. This is the only time that you can get this is during celebration. Um, you can, there's also an option now through the end of March to just get the designer series paper. Um, so you don't have to get the stamp set with it and that's with the free with a $50 purchase. So it's kind of nice that Stampin' Up's given us those two options. Now the really cool thing is that Stampin' Up also came out with these dies. This is a limited time release and these framelits cut out the stamps um, in the Painted Seasons. This is called the Four Season Framelits and it cuts out all of the different images. So we're gonna be using that today. So I'm really excited to be playing with this beautiful bundle. And you'll see as we start stamping how detailed and how pretty um, these stamps are once you get ink on them. So I'm really excited for that. Okay, so let me show you, let me put these away here. Let me show you the projects we're gonna making. The first um, project I'm gonna be showing you guys is how to use um, the stamps and mask them off. So we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to mask and stamp so that you can overlap the flowers and the leaves, okay? It's so fun. And then of course I used another celebration coordination product, which is this, this new story label punch, which I absolutely love. It's so pretty and so cool. And so I'm gonna show you how to layer, um, kind of do layers behind the, the, the label punch, okay? So project number two is this super fun, um, card, card in a box. You guys, I've made these before, right? This is the, um, everyday label is the celebration coordination punch. So it's only available during March. You can purchase it. I believe it's $18 and it coordinates with a lot of the sentiments in the, actually the, um, 
it was actually intended to coordinate with the part of my story, which is a free celebration item. And it fits all of the sentiments inside of the punch. And this is the one I used, know that today a friend is thinking of you, I used with this punch. So, I am gonna show you how to do that. The second project is the card in a box. I've made these before, I absolutely love them. I love that they open up and they do this beautiful wow factor. Um, can you guys see how pretty that is? Um, absolutely beautiful. I'm going to show you guys how to do this. It's not hard at all. Um, and I thought, well, with these awesome framelits, it'd be so easy to cut out those flowers and leaves and make a really cute bouquet in a card. So very fun. So I'm going to show you that. And then last but not least, you guys, I'm so excited about this. I found a new bag that I love. This is a gift bag using that gorgeous designer series paper. And it's collapsible. It folds in half not folds in half, but it folds down. Um, and so I'm gonna show you guys how to make it. It opens up like so. I still feel like my camera's a little bit too low. I'm gonna raise it up a little bit. So absolutely awesome. Uh, very excited about it. I can't wait to show you guys how fun this. Now this bag is a little bit more complicated to make, um, but I have all of the measurements and everything on my um, project sheet. So you can go over to my blog post and you can pull off my project sheets and it has all three projects and all of the measurements down below. It even has all of the things that are happening right now that I have going on in my um, Square store, okay? No, this takes, Janie, that's a good question. This takes two sheets of the designer series paper, two 12 by 12 sheets. And it's just absolutely adorable. So I'm gonna show you all three of these projects. Let's go ahead and start with the um, masking card and everything I need. Now, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I am using my 2017, 2019 in colors um, for this card. And the reason I am is because these colors are only available, they're only guaranteed in stock this month. Starting next month, they are while supplies last because they're going away with the new annual catalog. They're only um, available for two years. That's why it says 2017 to 2019. So May 31st, these puppies go away or while supplies last and all of the coordinating products in these colors. And I absolutely love these five colors. So I'm really, really sad that they're going away, but I thought I'd get some use out of them and play with them before they're gone. So if you love these, this now is the time to get anything in these colors because they're guaranteed this month, okay? And I'm so sad. I think my two favorites that I'm sad are going away are the Lemon Lime Twist and the Berry Burst. Absolutely my favorites, but I love all of them. I use them so much. All right, so for this card, we'll need some pieces. We have our base, which is Berry Burst, and then we have a piece of Tranquil Tide and a piece of lemon lime twist that will be our, our um, mats, basically. So I'm going to go ahead and glue these down because we don't have to worry about any type of things going behind them. So we'll just put these down. Again, all the measurements are on that project sheet. Just print that off and use it as a reference. Or if you place an order with me this week by Friday, you can get these projects cut and prepped by me for you. You can just get them in the mail and put them together. Okay, so then we have these two pieces which we're gonna use with our punch and this one's for our sentiment as well. Let's go ahead and get started on the stamping of our card here. Um, and the thing that we're gonna have to do, we have to do a little bit of prep. As you can see, I have a sticky note in here and I'm gonna show you how I created these templates to use for masking. And I have used a, um, a sticky sheet or a um, sticky note because I want the back to be sticky but to be able to remove it without hurting my paper. So I'm gonna show you, I already have two made but I'm gonna make one for you just so you can see how it's done. It's really, really simple. All you're going to do is stamp your image on a sticky note. Make sure that you stamp, part of your stamp is where it's sticky. So the sticky part's at the top. So I wanna get as much of the flower up at the top as possible so that I can get it sticky. I'm gonna use my stays on ink. 
Good morning, Trisha. Thank you for watching. Okay, so I'm gonna just stamp my flower. Trying to get as much up as up on the top as possible, just like so, okay? And it really doesn't matter what color you stamp it in, but black is easy for me to see, so I'm just gonna use that. So just cleaning the stays on off of that. You definitely wanna clean stays on right off your stamps as soon as possible or else it will stain. Okay, and so then we do have to do a little bit of fussy cutting, which is no big deal because once it's done, you're gonna keep it inside your case and have it for forever. So you can just stick it to the case and use it whenever you need. So we're just going to cut around. And this you do wanna be precise. You wanna be as close as possible because you don't want a gap between your flowers when you, when you mask them off. So just cut right up to the black. This, this isn't like your standard fussy cutting because usually we leave ourselves a little bit of a white space, but this time we want to be precise. And so that's why the framelits won't work because the framelits leave a little border around the image. And that doesn't work for masking. There is a die Debbie, yes, but for masking, it will, it will not do the job. Otherwise, we'll have this kind of white space around all of our flowers. Okay, so now we've got our little template cut out. And so what you're gonna do is you're just going to start stamping. So what I did is I stamped in two different colors. One, I stamped in just Berry Burst directly. So these darker flowers that you can see are Berry Burst. And I used my daubers to create two tones. So I have two daubers here. So some of the flowers I stamped in powder pink um, and I used a dauber to color the outside. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. You can get a two-tone color. It's really, really cool. Um, there's my stamp, there it is. So if you start by inking the lighter color, so I'm gonna do powder pink. And then I'm going to take my dauber and I'm gonna take some of the darker color and I'm gonna go around the border of my stamp. And then I'm even gonna do the center because I want the center to be darker. And then I can stamp. And it's gonna give me this two-tone flower. Do you see that? Isn't that gorgeous? I love it. Love, love, love it. Um, so we can, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to kind of go between the colors because I want to kind of mix up the colors. So sometimes I'll just do Berry Burst. And this is where the masking comes into place. So now that you have your um, template cut out, you can put it over, stick it down, and you can stamp next to it like so. See that? And then when you peel this back, you've got two of them together. Now, you can see that I have a little bit of white space. That um, is because I probably need to have a surface down below and make sure that I push down real good so that I can get it all the way up to the line. Um, so it's just a matter of how well you're stamping, which I didn't do a very good job stamping that one. Um, so we'll do this again, but I'm gonna clean off my stamp. And we'll do another pink one. So we're gonna do the petal pink again. Ink up my dauber. And just like we did last time, just add that darker color to the edges and to the center. And let's go ahead and do another flower right out here. I know, isn't it great for this set, Karen? It's so cool. Okay, so there's another flower. Let's go ahead and clean this off and we'll do another darker flower. And so this is what you just keep doing. You just keep adding flowers and the masking, that's, this is why I made two of the masks is because you sometimes have to stamp over two flowers. So you'll need to mask out both. So here's one flower and we gotta line up this flower. It's like a little puzzle. 
and I'm gonna do a dark flower right here in the corner. Voila. So, so cool. How fun. You just start building up these flowers. Um, and so you just keep covering your flowers and keep stamping. And that two-tone is just so fun. And you can play with it and just find all kinds of different um, little color combinations. You could even do um, purple and pink. You have that fresh fig in the pink. Hi, Sonia. And um, yeah, you can play with all these fun different colors. So we're just gonna keep going. And stamp. And then I'm gonna move this one over. It's kind of fun trying to figure out how it fits. <laughs> like, what did I do here? Oh yeah, like this. And then we're going to um, do one more dark flower out here like that, okay? And then I think I'm going to start going on the other side here. So let's do another dark flower since I already have it on there. Let's do one here. So you get to just play. You're just gonna create this beautiful little background with all these pretty flowers and these two tones. You know, not all flowers are the same color. So this kind of gives it this fun depth. And then you're doing the masking, which is just, oh, oh I almost didn't mask which just adds like this another level. It's kind of cool. So we're going to do one right here. Pretty, pretty, pretty. And then I think I'm gonna do another one over there and I call it good. So let's go ahead and just make sure you clean off this flower so you're not getting the dark um, berry burst in with the petal pink. Okay, so let's do one more over here. What mat are you using? This mat here, Karen? This is the piercing mat. It comes with the piercing tool. Actually, I think it might be sold separately. Um, but this is the piercing tool and it's actually intended to poke through the paper onto a surface. But also, if you need an extra cushion to get like even stamping, you can use it um, to do that or to do some free kind of free um, freestyle scoring. So we're actually going to be using that today um, for some scoring. Okay, so we've got these beautiful flowers here. Now we still need to um, add some greenery and we're going to need to mask off for that as well. So I'm going to put my little dauber aside and close up our pinks. Addie likes the masking. Addie should definitely give it a shot. It's so fun. So I've got my lemon lime twist, which is one of my favorite greens. I'm gonna be so sad when it goes away. I'm gonna have to stock up on all that um, lemon lime twist um, ribbon because it's so pretty and all of it's gonna be going away. Okay, so we're going to mask some of our flowers because we are going to start stamping some green leaves because our flowers need green. So I'm just gonna mask some neighboring flowers here and we'll just add some beautiful little stems. Okay, um, maybe one over here like so. And then we can continue to move our masks and add some green, maybe put one here again. And we'll just work our way across. And. Hi, Teresa. Thank you, Trisha. I'm, I'm glad you like it. All right, so we're just going to continue masking off these cute little flowers. Don't wanna ruin all that beautiful work we did. And we're just going to add some greenery. Okay, so then let's do this side. I like adding a little bit of green to these little kind of negative spaces down here, which I think is kind of cool. Um, 
So sometimes I like to leave that little space so we can add green. And I think it masks like that. So let's add some green here. So cool. Like that. So very, very fun. Um, let's go ahead and do some here. And maybe one down here. Okay, and then we're not done, guys. We are still going to um, use our darker green, which is the Tranquil Tide. fun Patty I'm I'm excited I can't wait for you to make these cards your people are gonna love them they're, they're so so cute um and just really uh, just the wow I love the layering I just love it I'm it's weird that I get excited over these things huh so I'm just going to cover these up again and we're going to go with the tranquil tight and this smaller leaf and I think it's best to do the darker one in the smaller because it's less, I guess, um, how, what's the word I'm looking for? Because it's such a bold and dark color, and just by adding it in these little shades, it's kind of more eye, more appealing to the eye. I'm even gonna do a little dark one over here in the corner, very fun. Okay, so then we're gonna switch it up, move these over here. And it's just cool, you're just building. You're just building on these layers. And it does take a little bit of time, but it's kind of fun. Ooh, I see a little bit of negative space over here. I definitely wanna get a little greenery in there. Ha ha ha. And then, oops, I'm off a little bit. There. And maybe that way. And we'll definitely go that way. It's very fun, Diane. You got to try it. It's it's not difficult at all, but you're right. It's just added all this depth. Now it's like this deep, beautiful picture of these flowers. And then, like I said, don't get rid of your little mask. Once you've made them, you have them, and they can just stick down inside of your... Well, this one doesn't want to stick because I said to, because I told it to. But you'll stick these inside, and then you'll have them to use later on. So once you make the masks, then you don't have to make them anymore. So I'm just gonna clean off these stamps and show you how we make this label. So our label is using the painted, or the part of my story sentiment. I stamped this in Berry Burst. Oh, look at they all stuck over here. And I love the part of my story stamp set. It just has the best sentiments but I'm going to use the one for a friend which would be fabulous for Patty on her mail a card Monday which I need to start I need to get in the habit of doing that Patty you gotta like hold me accountable because I have all these cards that I make I should be sending them out so, so stamp my sentiment there gave myself a little bit of space because I do need to punch it out I'm going to clean the stamp off so this is that Fabulous new punch. You guys know I'm a sucker for punches. I just love punches. They make life so much easier. So I've stamped that out. And then I need to also stamp one out of the Tranquil Tide and the Lemon Lime Twist. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to cut these little labels out. Just cut them in half like that. And this is how we're going to build up our label. So I'm gonna put a little bit of adhesive, and I need to throw this bottle away, but I'm gonna put some, put these little labels on the back, and you do need to see where you're gluing it down because you'll wanna adjust it. So you're just gonna have a little bit of your label showing behind. See that? And you're just going to hold it down for a sec till it dries. So you can see there's a little bit of gap in the center because you want it to see on both the bottom and the top. Good morning, Cindy. Thanks for joining us. You just, we're just on the first card, so you haven't missed anything. 
All right, so this is our second, our second border. And you notice how I'm using um, the same colors and, and the same pattern to match the border of our card. So you can see it goes Tranquil Tide and then Lemon Lime Twist. I did Tranquil Tide and Lemon Lime, lemon lime Twist. Okay, so the other thing that we need to do is put the ribbon on the back of our um, label. This ribbon comes in all five of those in colors. This is the ruffled ribbon. It's only available till May 31st or while supplies last. Here's Tranquil Tide and here's Fresh Fig. I absolutely love this ribbon. I used up all my lemon lime and my powder pink, so I need to get more of those before they're gone. But this ribbon is absolutely adorable. And what I did was I put down some tear and tape on the back of my label because I wanted something strong. So I just put down a couple strips of the tear and tape. And just peel that off. I know. I'm excited to see the new colors, Trisha, but I'm so sad to see these ones go. And I feel like I say that every time, but I really like these ones. Okay, so now we're going to kind of do the zigzag pattern in the back. And this is why I have the tear and tape is because I want to have, you know, have something help hold it down. So I'm going to do kind of a loop, loop de loop. And I'm going to trim off the extra. And then you have this pretty kind of zigzag pattern in the front. Okay, so let's go ahead and glue down our beautiful flowers that we've created. And you'll have to figure out, you know, what you want to be the top and what you want to be the bottom. Um, and then just glue that down. Always make sure that <laughs> your card opens the right way. You know, I would never put it past me to glue it down the wrong way. And I'm gonna say, um, use tear and tape again, because you want a strong, strong adhesive to hold this label down. You could also use dimensionals, um, but tear and tape's good. I'm, I'm like really confident in tear and tape, like it's not going anywhere. So I'm just gonna put down kind of an X of tear and tape. And glue this down here. And you can bling this card up to your heart's content. You can use Wink Stella on the flowers. You could do rhinestones, pearls, um, anything that you want. This card is just absolutely gorgeous and I love the colors, you guys. So hopefully you like that. But it's just a um, fun way to mask. So you guys should try it out. Definitely give masking a try. Yay, I see hearts. I think you like it, yay, yay, yay. All right, so that's project number one. Now, project number two is our beautiful pop-up card. Oh, it's gonna be a lot of big shot work, but we'll get through it, it's gonna be fun. And you can see I did some of that two-tone stamping on the succulent here. I've got Lemon Lime Twist and Tranquil Tide going on there, so we'll do that. I'll show you guys, it's really, really, really cool. All right, so we're gonna cut this <laughs> to nine inches. Oh, Lordy. Nine inches by five and a half. Okay, and we're going to score at two and three quarters. Yep, two and three quarters. See if I can get this right this time. Two and an eighth, four and a quarter, six and three eighths, and eight and a half. Goodness gracious. I know, someone gave me a mad face. I know, I'm so sorry, you guys. The side that you wanna cut up is the top. So you want it to be the side that you take the rectangle off of. So this rectangle that I'm cutting out, that's going to be the top and that's the side that we need to cut up. I did the opposite and cut up the bottom. 
but this is the side you need to cut. And again, I'm just gonna get my big scissors out because this, I can't. I can't with the little scissors. All right, now let's go ahead and score those down real good. Um, we wanna fold them out. And then the rest we have to fold the opposite direction. So does that make sense? Do you guys see what I did? Um, and again, I'm gonna miter these. Okay, and before I assemble my box, I'm gonna make put my little matted pieces on. So I have eight pieces of designer series paper. Keeping it real is true. Oh my gosh, Patty, no joke. So I have that beautiful Painted Seasons Designer Series paper. I used the kind of pink side for the inside and I used the um, succulents for the bottom side. So you can see here the succulents are on the outside and the pink are in the inside. So on one side at the bottom, we're gonna glue these down and I'm just gonna use tar or fast or uh, snail. Can't say things. So we've got that. Bryn, will you private message me um, what it is you want and I will uh, see what I can do for you. As far as classes go, I have, um, I'm, I'm done with the cats class, but I do have the PDF tutorial on my online store that you can get. Um, but the other ones are still good to go. So if you want those, thank you so much. Karen, you are absolutely right. I do need another cup of coffee. <laughs> Lord knows I need my coffee. I always want to call my adhesive something that it's not. That's like a common occurrence with me. So I'm just gluing these panels down the inside and then we'll assemble the box. I think it's easier to glue them down with the panels, you know, with it being open and then when we glue it, we can um, put the box together. So we're just going to put that down. And then we're going to close it on itself. And voila, you have this awesome little box here. Isn't that cool? So fun. And I must have had my measurements off just a bit because I feel like these panels are a little bit skinnier. <laughs> but, well, we, you know, we're again, we're gonna blame it on daylight savings. Okay, so then you need two pieces of tranquil tide. I already have them cut and scored. And they measure an inch and a quarter by, what does it say? By three and one eighth, scored at half an inch on both sides. And we're gonna do this kind of zigzag. And let's put tear and tape on those and we'll glue them to the inside of our box. Karen, I do post these videos on YouTube. Yes. Okay, so. Now, I always like to use my, the back piece as the piece that has that, um, that seam, the, where I connected the box, so that you can't see, you can't see that, um, that seam as well. And we're just gonna stick this piece in. Try to do it strategically so it's not sticking till you're ready. But you're gonna put this in to your box and adhere it to the sides. And this is going to be what we position our flowers on. Hot mess times 10 today. Daylight savings is like, oh yeah, you wanna blame it on me? Okay, gotcha. We'll take care of that. 
I don't know what I did, but we got a new panel going and we'll just insert that in. And this one's fitting a lot better, so that's good. That's a good sign. Oh, goodness. I think it's my box. I think my box has the wrong dimensions and so it wasn't folding, but there we go. Now we got it. Okay, well, we're gonna go with it. I don't know what happened. All right, so now we've got our pieces. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Okay, now we've got our pieces. Um, next is going to be stamping all of our flowers. And I have a bunch of Whisper White that we're going to stamp our flowers with. And um, so I just kind of did, okay, so I need one, two, three, four, no. Two Berry Burst, two Fresh Fig, two Powder Pink, and then I need three, three succulents. Okay, so we'll just stamp some of that and then we'll do a bunch of big shot work. And the Berry Burst, oh yeah, Barbara, no, no big deal. You guys, I will survive, promise you that. It takes more than that to get me off my crafting wagon. Okay, so we've got three Berry Burst. And two, two of the Powder Pink. I just love these colors together. They're just the perfect Colors. And can you see these stamps, how detailed and pretty they are? I absolutely love whoever designed these stamps. I love it. So pretty. Yes, Cindy's, they read my mind. Love it. And then I have the fresh fig. So there's our fresh fig. So, so pretty. Um, and then we're going to do some succulents. And I'll show you how we're going to do that same kind of two-tone succulents. So if you start with the lemon lime twist, and I have a little dauber for green for the tranquil tide. So stamp your succulent in lemon lime twist, and then take your dauber and color the outside of your succulent, and you can see that dark green. And then I just did a little center. Look at that. Oh my gosh, it's such a pretty succulent. I love it. Love it. Can you guys see it? So pretty. And then I'm gonna do one more. And you could add, I mean, you could do purples, you could do all kinds of fun colors. Okay, so there's two succulents, gorgeous. And let's go ahead and do our leaves over here. And we have like a beautiful fern. And we have um, our kind of more longer leaf that I love. So I did my longer leaf in the Tranquil Tide. And I did about, um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six of these, seven, seven of these. And I did um, one, two, three, of the yellow ones. And you could do two-tone on the leaves. I mean, you can go all out. This is just a lot of fun to play with and getting those colors mixed. And look how crazy those five in colors are perfect for these flowers and leaves. Okay. So now I get to play with the awesome new framelits. I'm so excited. Um, and some of these framelits, you can see here, they have two of the leaves, two and three of the small leaves, and two, uh, one of the big flowers and the pine cone. But so that makes it easier to cut out all those leaves that you need. So, flip this around. And we will try to cut out as many leaves as possible at once. I am using my magnetic sheet, um, so hopefully it will help kind of hold 
those leaves down and not sh shift so much. Okay, so now look at it. We have all of these beautiful pieces and we can glue some leaves behind our flowers and then we'll put them up on our box. So the thing, the kind of the trick, trick to this is to have window sheets because they're clear and you can't see them. Um, they're see-through. Um, you can use these to kind of stand up your pieces. Oh, one other thing I forgot to stamp is the sentiment. So let's go ahead and do that. I used the um, Humming Along stamp set because it has an awesome birthday. It says wishing you an amazing birthday and it fit inside of my um, story label punch, which is awesome. And I just stamped it in tranquil type. So we'll do that. And then we'll punch it out. So, and where's my little, where's my lovely, amazing punch? I love this punch. Look at that. Look how awesome that fits. Okay, so now we have all of our pieces. All right, so what it kind of helps to do all this gluing ahead of time and then put it um, in your in your box. So what I mean by that is by putting adhesive and gluing your pieces to your um, little window sheets and then gluing your leaves behind your flowers. And we'll have our little example here in the screen so you can see like this one will be our corner, our side piece here. We have one of our succulents with a little leaf behind it and that can be in our front. And then we have another berry burst one here. Oops, we want the front of the leaf. Berry burst flower. And this one had two leaves. So we'll do just, I mean, just can we appreciate the beauty of this? This is so pretty, just absolutely gorgeous. Um, I am so impressed with Stampin' Up! for designing this gorgeous set. Just amazing. Um, so we'll put those on there and let's see, we want some more leaves behind these flowers. So pretty. The thinlets and punch come to me on coming to you on Tuesday. So awesome, Barbara. You're gonna love it. Love, love, love it. Okay, and then this one. All right, so we have got to decide where we want things now. So if we bring our box in, and we look at where we want stuff. Um, definitely want, oh, so here's the one kind of trick that I have, I suggest you do, is for the back panel for it to stay up, you can either glue the designer series paper down to keep it flat, or you can put your flowers, um, so I'm gonna put these on dimensionals, so you can put your flowers on dimensionals and you can glue it down underneath so it will hold it open. And I'll tell you, I'll show you what I mean by that. So I'm just gonna put some dimensionals behind my flower. This is gonna be our top one. And it's gonna go on this back piece here. And then the, the only thing that you're gonna have to be really careful about is making sure that your box, when it closes, that nothing pokes out the sides or top. Otherwise, it will not fit in your, in your envelope. So there's that. And then, so what I was referring to as far as the flower that goes down is having another flower here, like so, or even going this way, 
but having it so that it's glued on the inside of the bottom panel and the top will keep it rigid and straight. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna put dimensionals on the back of it. Okay, and we'll glue that down. And that's just going to give us kind of that sturdy, you know, keeping that top piece up, okay? It does hide a lot of the flower, but you know, it's okay. So we're going to put dimensionals on all of these flowers that go on the side panel. So I thought we'd get those out of the way. So we'll put one here and our succulent in the front. So, so cool. So here's our succulent in the front, and then we have our side flower. Actually, I like that one being for the center. Uh, I don't know. We'll keep it the same. Oh, I'm sorry, Karen. I'm sorry you can't watch the whole thing, but yes, you can watch it on YouTube later. I will be putting it on there. So there's our last flower in the corner there. Okay, so now, we, like I said, we're going to decide like where we want the rest of our things placed. We'll glue some um, window sheets. These are just cut at half an inch by about three inches um, so that we have them long enough to put on our, on our box. So I just want these to get, have a second to glue. I think I'm gonna turn this one around. Can't have all the greenery going the same direction. Okay, so once this glue has had a chance to dry, I know this one's been on here the longest, so we can probably glue this down. I'm actually going to, rather than using um, liquid glue, I'm gonna use Terran tape because uh, it takes less time to dry and it will stick wherever we put it. So that's the only thing though, is that we have to know exactly where we want this when we glue it down. But you're gonna glue those pieces down to those inside panels. That's what those are for, is to hold everything together. So that's what we're gonna do. We're just going to glue our pieces to our card and we just layer it and I think I'm actually short some flowers. I think I need more flowers than this even. But you're just going to, again, making sure that the flowers don't stick out past the box when it stays closed. That's really, really important. And I think this one might stick out, so I might have to move it. Maybe back here. Don't want it to cover my picture or my sentiment. And I think I want that one up on, on window sheet as well. I didn't cut that many window sheets, but I can cut one real quick if you guys don't mind waiting. But you can, I mean, I want you guys to get the idea. So you're just going to be putting flowers on all the different levels. And I'm just, I'm just free cutting one. But you're just going to put flowers at all the different levels um, and make this beautiful box. So you can make it as full as you want. Oops. I meant to put tear and tape so I didn't have to hold it, but that's okay. But so yeah, so see how it's just going to be this full box of flowers and it's gonna be, oh, how did you fall off? It's gonna be so cute and so eye-catching and just a beautiful little bouquet of flowers. And you can see it closes up and it stays inside. And then I would just continue adding I used liquid glue, so now it's not dry inside, but I would just continue adding flowers until it's full, until it's where you want it to be. And yeah, so, so cute and fun. 
Anyways, the flowers, I think, make a stunning statement for a beautiful card. So there you go, you guys. You can see this one's a lot fuller, so you want to continue cutting out um, flowers. But definitely give this a shot because it's so fun. And again, if you fold it the right way, it stays closed just like that. Very, very fun. Okay, cool. Yay, I see hearts. You guys like that box. Even though I <laughs> literally struggled like nobody's business with that. <laughs> so cute. Love this bag, you guys. Oops, knocked over my little trash bin. Love this bag. And it's definitely, I will say, um, a little bit more complicated than the bags I've made in the past. But um, it was a fabulous way to show off this beautiful designer series paper. And um, I think there's lots of different options. So I'm going to be using um, a different designer series paper than this one. It's the same out of the same pack but I'm gonna use two different sheets here. And I'm going to do the more subtle side with a pop of the busy side. Whereas this is kind of like that busy print on the bottom and kind of more subtle on the top. I'm gonna do the opposite effect with this one. So this is out of the same designer series pack. Um, and I thought we would have fun making it. So um, again, all the measurements are on my um, project sheet and I'm gonna have to definitely follow those along really really closely they're right down here so I have this right next to me here and we're gonna need our trimmer because we have to do some um, tri uh, some scoring and we're going to open our blade here the name of the designer series pa paper is painted season Karen and it's part of that um, bundle with the stamp set so the painted season designer series paper and the painted season stamp set come together as a bundle when you place a hundred dollar order um, and the designer series paper you can now get separately by itself for a fifty dollar order you can get it for free so you have the two different options which is awesome because if you want more of that designer series paper you can do it separately then that way you don't end up with 10 stamp sets <laughs> all right so here we go let me get my little we have two sheets that so we're going to be cutting almost identically. So two 12 by 12 sheets of designer series paper. Make sure that you have the direction of the way you want your design to be going up and down on this first score. The first score we're going to do uh, is at one and a half. And you're going to do that starting at the seven and a half mark. So go to the seven and a half mark here. And I like to start here and you're gonna score up. Okay, and then you're gonna move it to the three inch and score that all the way down. And then you're gonna go all the way out to the 11 inch and score that all the way up. Okay, so now we're going to turn counterclockwise. Okay, still with me? And we're gonna score at one and a half. And this one, uh, one and a half, we're gonna score it all the way across. Ooh, okay. And then at seven and a half, we're gonna score from the bottom to the nine inch mark and I don't know if I, you guys can see that so you have your paper at the seven and a half and you're gonna score from the bottom up to that nine inch mark and only to that nine inch mark okay and then you're gonna move it um, to the nine inch mark and score all the way okay <sighs> I got through the one scoring so then we're gonna take our second piece, make sure that again, the pattern is facing the right way and we're gonna do the same thing. Um, so this so this first one, um, you're gonna repeat, the only difference is that when you turn it, you're gonna score it a little bit different. So at this first score, you're gonna score it at the seven and a half mark all the way up. Okay, then you're gonna move it out to the three inch and score all the way and then out to the 11 inch
and all the way. Turn it counterclockwise and repeat. And this is going to be at the one and a quarter, one and a half inch. And we're going to start at the seven and a half. Come on. Oh my. There we go. It was stuck. Start at the seven and a half. Mark this at the one and a half. And score up. Okay. And then get to the seven and a half mark. And instead of scoring from the not bottom to the nine, you're gonna actually score all the way across. And this is going to allow our bag to fold. I'm going slow because I wanna make sure these are right. And then go to the nine inch and score that all the way up. Okay, Whew. Whew. finish the scoring. It's a little bit tricky on the scoring, but it's okay, we made it. Um, now, for the bottom pieces, we are going to cut up this bottom piece and this bottom piece here. I know it's kind of hard to see, um, but definitely harder to see on the other side. I'm gonna just fold at those lines so we can, we can see where it is we need to cut up. But this is the side, that, the bottom side that has these two score lines going like this. So there's these two score lines and then there's two score lines going the opposite direction. And we are going to cut up those. So just up to that nine inch mark. Like so. Okay, and we'll do it with the same, we'll do the same one on this side. Hopefully you guys can see that. So there's these two here. And then we're going to take our piercing mat and our scoring blade, and we're going to score two extra lines on our designer series paper. Now, they're going to be, and I'm gonna have my ruler out so you guys can see, there is this score line that comes down. So this kind of, kind of is a panel piece. If you can see here, I have it. So, Here's this kind of center. This is the fold in the bag. And then there's this line here. There's these two score lines. I know it's kind of hard to see, but you're going to use your ruler and score from that line to the point to the corner here. So you're gonna make like a triangle and you're gonna do it from this side to this side. Okay, just like that. And then we're gonna do it with the next piece of paper. And you just wanna be a little bit gentle with this paper because it is a little bit thinner uh, for a bag. So just be really careful with your score lines. And so hard to see that. There we go, okay. It is some intricate scoring instructions, Karen. I did say this one is a little bit more complicated, but it's so worth it. If you can get through it, it's so worth it to make this adorable bag. So you can see this is the top part that's gonna fold over and reveal that beautiful designer series paper on the back. Okay, beautiful. And so we'll definitely wanna burnish all of these kind of um, score lines. You can see this is the side of the bag and this is where it folds the opposite direction. And you'll definitely wanna um, burnish those triangle marks that you made. That way your bag will fold nice and easy. And then, Fold in these bottom flaps. These are your bottom flaps. And this piece, we're actually going to cut off all the way. So I'm gonna get my scissors, this little rectangle piece. Okay, and then up here at the top, you're also going to wanna to cut in to this score line. So I'm gonna fold the score line so we can see it better. But can you see, so we have the bottom flap and the side piece here, and there's this little kind of rectangle up here. We need to cut into it. Like so. OK, 
okay? And we're actually going to just miter those edges so that we can fit this box or fit this bag together real nicely. And I'm gonna miter this one as well, okay? So that's what it's gonna look like. And we're gonna do the same thing to the other piece. Just cut that rectangle off at the bottom. and miter here and cut right here at the top and we'll miter that as well. Okay, so now we have our two pieces. Now we're gonna put some tear and tape. Actually, I wanna fold these real quickly here. I wanna fold in and I want to Fold these little triangle score lines I did. And this is going to be that fold that helps our bag fold flat, okay? All right, tear and tape time. So on one piece of our bag, we are going to put tear and tape along the bottom. If I can find the end of my tear and tape, this bottom flap needs to have some tear and tape so that we can close it. Sure, Terry, <laughs> we can attempt that, no problem. Whew, it is a, it is a, um, a detailed bag. So I'm putting tear and tape on this side piece here. And I'm also going to put tear and tape on this little flap here that we created because this is gonna be tucked into the top of our bag and glued inside. So I'll show you that in a minute. Okay, so you can see on the outside, I put a little bit of tear and tape on this side panel. On the inside, I put tear and tape on the bottom big flap. This is gonna be the bottom of our bag. On the second piece, we also need to put tear and tape on the side panel, so we'll do that. And on our little flap. So I folded that down and put it on our little flap, like so. Okay. And then we can I think that's all we need, and then we can put them together. So here, here's the part where we're going to actually put the bag together. So you can see these are the two sides, and this is all that kind of intricate scoring that we did. And this piece is actually going to tuck inside, but we're not gonna glue that little piece inside, but we're gonna tuck it so that we know where they need to line up, okay? So we're gonna take the tear and tape off of this side panel and put our bag together. Good morning, Sherry. So you can see I have a little bit of tear and tape on this little flap because it's going to tuck inside. And then you just wanna make sure you line up the bottom of your bag and the top of your bag. This is the outside of the bag that we're gluing down, okay? So you can see that it's gonna glue down like this. And this is gonna be the outside of our bag. So I have just glued that inside panel to the inside of our bag, like that. And then we're gonna do the same thing with this side. And so you can see I'm not gluing any of these flaps down yet. But if we fold this flat and we lift up the tear and tape here, and you see we can fold this over, this little flap's gonna be inside and it's gonna fold and it's gonna glue like that. So now you can see that it's gonna be a bag and this little side will go inside here as well. But we're not gonna glue that down yet. And the reason is, is because we're gonna make these handles. And so I wanna show you how we're gonna do the handles before we glue anything down. So to make the handles, you are going to need a little half inch circle punch. And so while this is lying flat, we're gonna take our ruler and we're going to measure and we're gonna mark at the two inch mark, just a little dot. 
So here's a two inch. And two inches in from your other side, oops, from this mark, from the end of the bag. So you're gonna mark from two inches and then from eight inches over here, you're gonna mark at the six inch, okay? And then you're gonna take your little hole punch and just a smidgen, I mean like an eighth of an inch in, you're just gonna punch a little slit into the bag. This is where our handles are gonna be inserted. I said that funny, inserted. Okay, so then let's do the same thing on this side. We'll mark it at two and six. And now my pen wants to die, rude. Six, okay. So then we're gonna just punch a little sliver out of our bag. Okay, hopefully I haven't lost any of you or intimidated any, anybody. If I can do it, Lord knows you can do it. Okay, so there we go. Now we've got our little slits. And then we're gonna make these absolutely adorable handles. Look at these handles, you guys. These are made with rolling up um, copy paper. So I took a piece of copy paper, just regular printing paper, and I cut it in half. So. This is a, a piece of paper folded in half and then I just cut it in half evenly. And you're gonna need a sharp edge. I'm gonna use, let's see, what do I wanna use? I'm gonna use this box, okay? You just need a flat edge here. And you're going to just run this paper across that edge to get it to start curling. And see how it starts to give a curl? If I use the edge of my desk, I'm gonna get a better one. But you just wanna get it to start curling. And then you're going to start rolling your ends. Basically, you're creating a, like a twister, or not a twister, but like you're just rolling up Just, and it does take some time to get going. And I will tell you that I already made one so you don't have to sit here and watch me struggle. But it does take some time and it does take a little bit of work. But you can see I'm just rolling it up. And you want it to be as flat and long as possible. The goal is to try and make the end product about 12 inches. And if you, Start to get a little bit loose, then just unroll and roll it a little bit tighter. And I find that it seems to do better when I hold it and pinch it between my fingers. Yes, just like a crescent roll, absolutely. Thanks, Jenny, for having faith in me. This is gonna be a way too thick handle, but you guys, I'm not gonna have you sit here and watch me do this any longer. So you can see my handle is way too thick. But anyways, you can see that I'm gonna flatten it out so if you made a nice, nice roll, you would have a way thinner handle. Um, and you can see, look at this one. I did this one earlier off camera and it was just perfect. Absolutely perfect. So you can see like the, the um, difference in the handles. So I might just try that again later, but not with you guys. So you can see I'm kind of just curling it these are gonna be your adorable little handles. They are so worth it, they're really sturdy. Um, just put one on, right? I know, don't put this one on. I was thinking about maybe folding it in half. I don't know. I guess I'll only assemble one and then I'll come back later and do the other. So here's the handle. And what you'll wanna do is, you're gonna wanna put tear and tape inside where those little holes are so that it can hold down your handles. And that's why we haven't glued these panels down yet. So you're just going to put some tear and tape inside. Oh, Janie, don't make me make another one. I don't want you guys to sit and watch me roll that paper. That was like stabbing someone's eyes out. Okay, 
So here's how you're gonna put the handle. You want both sides of the handle to be facing the same way and you want them to be folded inward. You want the outside to be like that because it's not comfortable for your hand to hold the handle like this. So you want it to be like this and you wanna just slide those into those little slits we created and glue that down. And same with this piece into those little slits we made. And you get a gold star if you sat through this entire thing and watched me fight that paper for an hour and a half. So there we go, there's that handle. And then once you have that handle down, you can put that little tab in. So pretty. and you're just gonna tuck that under and glue that down. So once you have that done, then we can make our bottom. And basically what you're gonna do for the bottom is you're going to put tear and tape, well you already put tear and tape. Oops, I'm trying to peel all the tear and tape off. <laughs> Yay, Karen gets a gold star. <laughs> Congratulations, guys. You actually sat through my Facebook Live. Oh, geez, Louise. Okay, so these bottom side flaps you're going to put down, and then you're going to put down the flap that doesn't have any adhesive, and then you're going to put down this flap, and you're going to try and keep your bag nice and even and flat. So just like so. And then you can start telling your bag to fold over. Now you can see where we have that score line. On the back, that is where that bag folds flat. So cool, right? And then of course, I still need to glue this handle down or this side down, but I'm gonna make a different handle when you guys aren't watching me. I'm gonna roll another piece of paper to do a prettier handle because this one is just too wide and ugly. It's just not gonna work. So there is the awesome, awesome bag. It folds down flat, which is so great. And then you can make this awesome handle for it. I mean, an awesome little tag. I'm using the word awesome too much. And I stamped with um, Call Me Clover and Poppy Parade on my other bag for the little um, tag. But I think because I'm using the pine cone paper and the spruce, I'm gonna change it up and I'm going to do Call Me Clover and I'm going to do Early Espresso and Crumb Cake. And I think we're going to use that sponge technique that we did earlier um, to kind of get the two-tone shading. Because I haven't used the pine cone yet. This would actually make a really nice masculine little gift bag. You know, because guys like, guys like gifts too and they need a cute little bag. And uh, this could definitely be used. Look at that little pine cone. So cute. So we'll, we'll do that and we'll do some greenery with the pine cone. And I think even the um, even the little spruces have some light green, so we could do the two-tone with the green as well. So let's give that a shot. I have to find a dauber that has the right color on it. So here's my brown. I'm gonna start with crumb cake. And I have a piece of Whisper White that I'm gonna make my little tag on. It's two inches by three and a half inches. And, um, Move my bag out of the way here. I'm gonna stamp it in crumb cake, because that's the lighter. And then I'm gonna take my early espresso, get some dark color on there. You were thinking the same thing, Karen? I'm not that coordinated, may need to use ribbon instead. Oh, for the handles? Absolutely, you can use, you can use ribbon. Um, you can still use that same technique where you, um, what am I trying to say? where you would just put the slits and you can glue the ribbon down inside too. Absolutely, you can do that. I know I made it look really hard. So there is our first pine cone. Oh, look at that, so cool. Um, and we definitely wanna stamp our sentiment. Now I used the world needs more people like you and that's part of my story. And where is my part of my story stamp set? Here it is. So let's put that in early espresso how about I kind of want to see 
where I can stamp things. So let's go ahead and use my favorite punch of all time, the tag topper punch, and do our little top of our tag. So now I know I have my pine cone there. Just cleaning off the pine cone so I can stamp it again. I'm gonna do crumb cake and early espresso. And we'll do a little pine cone there. Very, very cute. Okay, and then let's do our sprigs, our spruces. That punch is amazing, you guys. Uh, you don't need me to tell you that. You guys know that. I'm just gonna get the green ink out of here so I can use it on Call Me Clover. So I think I'm gonna stamp the lighter color first which is the Lemon Lime Twist. And then I'm gonna get Call Me Clover and just kinda daub some of that in there. And let's see, where should we? Let's do one off to the side here. Oh, look at that. So cute. I love it. I love that two-tone effect. I'll bring it up closer so you guys can see. Look at that. All right, and then we'll do one right here, like so. So cute. And then we have this cute little bag that coordinates, our little tag coordinates with our bag. And then we can use the ribbon. <laughs> I'm just grateful that my measurements for the bag were actually right. I was a little bit traumatized after that card box that I did that was wrong. So, just tie that on there. So cute. You could even, if you didn't want to do the polka dots, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna mix it up a little bit. Maybe I don't want to do the polka dots. I have my Call Me Clover ribbon here. And I can do a bow in the Call Me Clover. So, Cute. I just want that tag to come on down. So we have that nice pop of green. So cute. So very, very fun. I actually really love the two different kind of tones of this these bags. Um, I love that they fold flat. And what a fun way to use that designer series paper and show off how cute it is. You guys love it? Look at those cute little bags. You can fit so much in them too, they're so big. Look how big they are. They fit a ton of stuff. How fun is that? What a great way to package up a cute gift um, for somebody that you love, how fun. And then again, we have our cute little card boxes that we did. And we have, <clears throat> where's my other card? Oh yes, we have our masking cards. So, so fun, you guys. I did um, really, really enjoyed playing with the Painted Seasons bundle. You guys have to give it a try. It's so fun. 